But before we leave, let's get three definitions down that are important, and we'll talk about them more next time, too. So all of this we've been doing today has been using what I've been calling the middle school definition. Uh, and then next time, we'll talk about what I think, or no, it's not just me, well, the more mathematical, broader definition that really gets more to the point. So definitions though, definitions. A function must be well defined, which means Every input, or I'll say each input, corresponds to one output. Not multiple. So for example, if we look at our f of x equals x squared from the real numbers to the real numbers, we look at f from the real numbers to the real numbers by f of x equals x squared. If you look at that, um, any number you plug in, I can tell you what's going to be what the output's going to be. You give me five, the output's going to be five squared. You give me seven, the output's going to be seven squared. It's going to go to one thing in the output. It's not going to go to multiple. It's going to go to one thing in the output. Um, an example that would be against this is well defined, and I'll say every input goes to just one output. And it seems stupid until you find out a function that's not, not defined, not well defined. So what if you try to define something like some g from the rational numbers to the real numbers? And you do this by g of a over b equals a plus b. This is not well defined. Is not well defined. Here's the reason why. Because What is the output of G of 0 0.5? From one perspective, G of 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is a, rash, a rational number. From one perspective, it's going to equal G of 1 half which should equal, okay, A over B, this should be one plus two, which equals three. Or this, this would be the energy, by the way. There we go. But from, from, another, from another perspective, G of 0 0.5 equals G of two over four, for example, which equals two plus four, which equals six. Or G of 0 0.5 could equal G of 13 over 26 is going to equal 13 plus 26, which is going to equal, what's that, 39. So the point is, this one input, g of 0 0.5, depending on how you write it as a fraction, will go to infinitely many different outputs. So inputs of 0 0.5 
goes to multiple outputs. So G is not well defined. And is therefore not a function. Because a function has to be well defined like this. Because a function has to be, you need to know if you plug in something what the output is. And you just don't know what 0.5 is here. Any questions on that? Hope that makes sense. Again, we'll do a little more of this next time. And then lastly, so that's where we'll define this. And then real quick, a function is called injective, or we're going to call it one-to-one, -one, same thing if every output also corresponds to a unique input. So for example here, um, the function f of x, f from the real numbers to the real numbers by f of x equals x squared is not one to one. Why? Well, because think of the output four, f of two equals two squared, which equals four, f of negative two equals negative two squared, which equals four, multiple things in the input go to the same output. Because multiple things, or actually the better way to write it is because one output can be hit by multiple inputs example, f of two equals four and f of negative two equals four. So the, so the output four does not correspond to a unique input, it can correspond to multiple. Whereas though, if we look at a different function, the function g that goes from the natural numbers to the rational numbers by g of n, equals n over two is one to one. And the reason this is one to one is because if you look at anything in the codomain, or sorry, if you look at anything in the range, anything that gets hit, gets hit once. Anything hit is hit just once. And we can prove this by saying that if g of m were to equal g of n, so if these two outputs were to equal each other, then we get that m over two equals n over two. Well, that just implies multiplying by two, that implies m equals n. And so, so what that tells us is that, what, what, what that tells us is that um, if two things equal each other, their inputs have to be the same. So you can't have two things with different outputs equaling each other. We're gonna cover that more next time too. I just wanna get the definition out there real quick for your homework. And then lastly, a function is called surjective or onto sur, S-U-R-J-E-C-T-I-V-E, -E, surjective or onto if every element 
of the codomain is hint, i.e. the range equals the codomain. And so, for example, f, the real numbers to the real numbers by f of x equals x squared is not surjective or onto since it only hits the positives, right? All the negatives don't get hit. So it's not, it's not onto. This function doesn't map, it just doesn't go to everything. The function g from z to q by f of n equals n over two is also not on two. It's again, not everything is hit. But the function h from let's call it z to z by h of n equals m plus one is on two since everything and codomain is hit. If you think about it, if you take anything in the codomain here, think of the number 55, for example, well, h of 54 will equal 55. So any number you give me in the codomain, I can plug in a number to output to that number. I can plug in an input to output to that number. And so um, that means it's on to. Anyway, I'm way over time. I just wanna get these definitions out there to help you with your homework if you wanna want to start doing three today. And then four, we have to do after Tuesday, after tomorrow. Sorry for going so over, everybody. But that is class. Any questions? All right, then get out of here. Please, I'm sorry to keep you. Have a good day. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome.